I grew up in America, in, in the USA, in the state of Maine. 1945 I was born. I'm no guy. I grew up at a time in America when everything was calm and peaceful. It was after the war. And life was very, very good until maybe 1960. And things began to change. American culture was changing. American politics was changing. I was lucky to have a very good education. Um, in college, my undergraduate degree was United States History. Well, it was United States myth. Everything about America was good. We are the good guys with freedom and democracy for people around the world. And I believe that. I wave the flag. But I went to study in Rome, in Europe. I was there for four years. And for the first time, I met a people from all over the world who thought, oh, American culture is good, we like your movies, we like your music, but your government is not good. Mm. So later on, um, I, I had a family, I had three children, uh, five grandchildren now, and um, my life changed dramatically. My life changed. As a filmmaker, I was asked to go to Korea, South Korea, and to make a short film, 10 or 15 minutes, about a small village on the island of Jeju, farming community, fishing, very poor. And America was building a new naval base and destroyed this village and the beautiful coast, um, UNESCO protected environment. It's a terrible violation of the environment and of human rights. The people had been protesting against this base for seven years, day and night, nonstop. Seven years. In the United States or in Korea? In Korea. Korea. On, on Korea. They, they wanted to stop construction of the base. Well, I was with them for one month. And I filmed every day, everything that the people did. They prayed, they had Catholic mass, um, and many people were brought to jail for protesting. Mm -hmm. So I thought, hmm, it's my government's doing this. But the people there kept talking about ghosts. Do you understand ghost, the word ghost? Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what they meant. I thought maybe that's their religion, the, the ghost. Mm -hmm. Well, one week before I left, they took me to a museum. Mm -hmm. It was called the April 3rd Peace Museum. Mm -hmm. Big museum, beautiful. And it was commemorating a terrible massacre of maybe 30 to 40,000 peasants who after World War II thought they were liberated from Japanese occupation, which was very brutal, only to find out it was the United States military government of Korea 
U.S. military government took over the southern part. In the north, it was all communists, China, North Korea, and Americans were afraid of communism. Mm -hmm. And so they occupied the southern part of South Korea. But what I learned there in pictures from the archives was this massacre that my government conducted against these people because they thought they were communists. They were unarmed with sticks stones and Americans in one year and a half, beginning on April 3rd, 1946, they began to massacre these free fire, just I was so upset, so angry. And both history is silent about that, yes? Never learned this in history, never, never. I we learned heard it this first time. I'm hearing this first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, for many people around the world, I made a movie about this. It's secret. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a short movie, it was a major documentary about what my government had done in 1946. I was the first one to tell this story outside of Korea. Mm -hmm. The movie now has been translated seven times, yeah. seven languages, including Russian. American Hollywood, American film festivals didn't want to hear it, okay? But American people, as I traveled the country, showing the film to small groups, peace groups, activists, people said, oh my God, we never knew this. And so the film spread that way around America, around the United States, and around the world, Europe especially. In Korea, they showed it many places, many times, and in China. Now we have it in Russia with Russian subtitles. So that's where my eyes were opened about the truth of my government. While I was in South Korea, they showed me many American military bases all over the country. Some 40,000 American soldiers, sailors, pilots, Air Force, were stationed in South Korea. I said, this is an occupation a military occupation of this country. So my, my life changed. It went on a different trajectory. I next started to make another film. And this film was called 30 Seconds to Midnight. <clears throat> Doomsday, boom nuclear war between America and Russia. And I knew then that I had to come to Russia to find out for myself as much as I could about Russia, Russian people, Russian culture, Russian history. In America we know nothing, nothing about other people's cultures, but especially Russia was always evil for Americans, always evil. So I came, and that's when I met Tatiana. She's a guide, professional guide, an interpreter. So she helped me understand that Russia was not the enemy. I came back three more times to travel to other cities, each time to Crimea making other films, but I finished 30 Seconds to Midnight and I basically said that Russia is not the enemy and that the, 
the threat, the fear of nuclear war was very, very serious now because of the actions of my government. I learned that America has bases all over Europe and in former Soviet republics. Many bases. America is doing military exercises along Russia's borders every year. American people do not know this. So I started to document that. I said, more American bases, more American imperialism, more American domination. And then I knew that uh, I didn't want to live in America anymore. So I came to Russia with a visa, a three-year visa, which expires now. When you visited uh, Russia for the first time, what uh, have attracted you, first of all? What attracted me is a search for the truth. Okay, a search for the truth. And I found the truth. In 2016 was the first time, but I first came to Odessa in Ukraine. A group in America uh, had been in contact with the mothers of those people who were massacred, who died on May 2nd, 2016 in Odessa. So I, they invited me as a filmmaker to come. And it was a memorial service. And I filmed that. And I saw with my own eyes right-wing Nazis. Okay? okay. Again. And the second question. May I give yes. you a question? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, you have been in Russia seven times, yes? And uh, every time you visit and uh, you understand uh, advantages and disadvantages. And when you compare uh, in Russia and in, in the USA, uh, what is the main disadvantages and advantages in, in these two countries? Good things, bad things. <laughs> in, in all of I have found, I have found not educational, <clears throat> not governmental, not... Uh, Military. Oh, yes. I have found in my travels around the world, to Asia and across Europe, and Russia, and Ukraine, and now here in Armenia, yeah. we are all the same. Everybody wants peace. Everybody wants happiness. Everybody wants a little prosperity. Everybody wants the most, the best for their children. Everybody wants a good future. Same in America, same here, same everywhere. But there are differences. America is like an island. Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, isolated. Only Canada and Mexico. So Americans know very, very little about other people. If they have money, they can travel, but they go for seven days and they see Europe. They come on a cruise to Russia, to the Black Sea, Crimea, and they stay for a day in Yalta, a day in Sochi, the cruise ship goes somewhere else, Turkey or whatever. So it's a very limited view that Americans have. Okay? I want to tell you this. American people are good people. American people. It's the American government that is evil. Okay? American people now are just beginning to realize what their government is doing, but only because they are feeling the economic pain because so much money is spent on military but not on education, 
not on infrastructure. Not culture. We have no health care, free health care. We pay big money for health care. So things in America now are changing very fast and very dramatically. It's going to be a difficult time economically for American people. Now I'll tell you something very important. All of my friends, when I first came to Russia, they said, ooh, be careful. The KGB will follow you. Okay. Turn off your phone. No Bluetooth. In your hotel room, don't talk. <laughs> I'm serious. So I came here. No KGB following me. I go everywhere I want, do what I want, buy what I want, talk to whoever I can talk to. And I am very free. Very free. Much more free than the United States. <laughs> now this is what I will tell you about the United States now. You remember 9-11? Yes. The towers came down. Terrorist attack. The terrorists were Americans. <laughs> okay, America, very powerful people did that. And, and, and they, they blamed it on some, some people from Saudi Arabia. From, it was not true. Anyway, American government passed a very important law. They wrote the law before the towers came down. They called it the Patriot Act. Mm -hmm. To check everyone whenever they want everything. Mm -hmm. And then one year later, George Bush, they passed the Homeland Security Act. Mm -hmm. Now we had domestic police, not regular community police, but a special new government agency that would inspect all airports all travel and they began to spy on American people mm -hmm. they were taking away our freedoms we, we were losing our freedoms and then finally one year ago they passed the domestic terrorist act mm -hmm. homeland terrorist act you know who that is me I am a domestic terrorist because I threaten the government. I talk the truth about the government. And that's no longer permitted in America. We say freedom of speech. No. For someone like me who makes films, I am more at risk than an ordinary person who may say, I don't like the government, I don't like Obama, I don't like Bush. I don't like Trump or Biden. They, they won't get in trouble. So I made one more film while in Russia for American people. And the title of the film was, Who are these Russians and why do we hate them? Mm -hmm. Americans, right? Very good historical film, not my opinion, not commentary, but history of America and what has happened in America in terms of being afraid of Russia, of communism, of evil. And so I will finish with this. And if you have questions, I would be happy to. Can we find that film in YouTube? Everything I have done is on YouTube and BitChute and Rumble, uh, other platforms like YouTube. YouTube is going away. It, if anybody says anything against American government, if anybody says the COVID-19 was not true, you're deleted. Three of my videos have been deleted already. And, and I have been moving. I have over 500 videos on YouTube. 
and I'm moving in now other places because I know very soon I will be depleted. Okay? Last thing I will tell you. When I came here March of 2020, almost two and a half years ago, I started to do a podcast, a video podcast. I use a camera and I use Zoom and I interview people in America and around the world, some very important people. And I have done now 250 of these video programs since March of 2020. 12,000 people subscribe to my channel. For me, that's a lot. But it's not millions, you understand? But people see the interviews and they write comments and they say, we can only get this kind of information from you and your guests. <clears throat> and so the reason I do that is my focus now, my purpose in life with whatever years I have left is to continue to try to tell the truth through the eyes and the experiences of other people. And uh, that's what I will continue to do. I, I do not think that I will go back to America. I don't think. But your family is there? Yeah. Uh -huh. and we do Zoom. You know, family visit with Zoom. Um, you asked me where I was from, and I said America, USA. But really, when I get to know people, I say, no, I'm a citizen of the world. A citizen of the world. Mother Earth is my home. Thank you, Regis. Hard to say Oh. Huh? Oh. 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 Да, э, он был в тюрьме, потому что он был в тюрьме, потому что он высказал идеи, которые не понравились реальному руководству Соединенных Штатов. Его звали Линдон Даруш. 1992. Их штаб-квартира была около Вашингтона, я там был. Да, и вертолетами подлетели ФБР, спустили десант и арестовали всех, кто был в штаб-квартире этой партии. Да. Так, что, э, так что, когда говорят о демократии в США, мне всегда становится очень весело. Так как я сам видел э, этих людей, сидящих в застенках, я как э, его этот сам, э, доверенное лицо заходил к нему в тюрьму в Миннеаполисе. Да, да, в Миннеаполисе, в тюрьме он сидел в Миннеаполисе. И только после того, как э, прошли выборы, их всех освободили. Mm -hmm. 
Так что подтверждаю ваши слова. It's American freedom. ways, uh, uh, right ways, underground ways, yeah. to emigrate in America. They spent most of their good time of young years for immigrating. Спасибо, Regis. Thank you very much. I am very happy to meet you. Very happy, and I'm very honored to be here and be with you and to be with my friend Hike. Uh, it's a great honor for me. I will tell people about my visit here and my visit with you and what I have learned about your country. Do you like Armenian language? Um, well, it, 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 sound, it sounds, your language sounds very beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, but I... All nature. Do you like all nature? All nature. All that nature. Yes. Armenian nature. Nature. Water. So far, so nice. Ah, we've been in the south. 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 Tanya, Tanya has. She's a professional guide in Russia, Crimea, and she is friends with uh, a guy here, a professional guy. And next week she's going to take us around. So he will see the country. Just, just and I hope I see Mount Ararat. I want to see Mount Ararat. And I tell you, I love wine. And we tried your wine. We bought some wine. It's very good. <laughs> and now I want, I, want to, I, want, I want to discover the famous brandy. И еще я бы попросил, Рази, чтобы несколько слов ты сказал о Крыме, твое впечатление, что такое Крым и прав, какая правда, какая правда о Крыме, твое понимание. And my hosts, five people, somebody in America said, when you go to Moscow, you, these people will be waiting for you. I said, okay. Well, they were all communists. <laughs> and I thought, whoa, oh, communists. <laughs> I knew that Russia was not communist anymore, but who are these people? Oh my God, we are friends for life. You understand? They showed me around Moscow. Almost two weeks. Moscow, big, beautiful city. And I said at the time, I have been to Paris. I have been to London. I have been to Tokyo. I have been to Seoul, Korea. I have been in many, many places. And I thought Moscow is maybe the most incredible city in the world. Beautiful, clean, anyway, too big. I went to Petersburg. Petersburg, beautiful culture, the museums, and very European, very European. And then I came to Crimea. Now I came to Crimea because I knew in America, kept saying Russia, Putin invaded and he annexed Crimea. But I, I didn't believe it, so I had to come. And because of Tatiana and her friends all told me, they were journalists, they were university people, they were 
ordinary people. There were high school students, all spoke English. The people, almost everybody spoke English that I met. And they told me what really happened with the referendum, that 85% of the people voted. 96% of the people said return to Russia. No military troops. Nobody died. Very peaceful. And I went back and I made a film, a short film, about Crimea returning to Russia. But I have to tell you, the American propaganda has the majority of American people very intelligent people believing that Putin invaded and took back Crimea. And then since 2014, the conflict in Ukraine, I had to go to Donbass. I went to the Donbass. Tanya was my guide, my interpreter, and we were there for one month. I made many films, many videos testimony of the people telling me what was going on and what was happening still every day in, in especially Donetsk. And again, I was very angry because it's my government that is behind it, all of it. It is not NATO. NATO is owned and run by the United States government. And so, once again, I saw what the government in the United States was doing, and now, in, in the Donbass, maybe 25,000 people, innocent people like you, and children have been killed, and still happening every day in Donetsk. And American people say, no, this is what Russia is doing this. You, you can't get through. It is. And that's what's so discouraging for me, very discouraging. This is the democracy. Yeah. 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 Is that a democracy, yeah? Yeah. 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 American democracy. Yeah. 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 yeah, no. It's a, it, a tragedy. Yeah. yeah, we... But the American government is doing it with the hands of Ukrainian. So there's Ukrainian government, no team self. Yes? Well, and I, and I have to tell you this. I do not believe it is Joe Biden. Yeah. Okay? It was not Bush. No. It, it was not Clinton. It's deep Bush. State. What? Deep State, yes? No. If no. you know Deep no. State, who? No. The bank, the banks, big banks. Mm -hmm. The city of does, he play this, this, huh? or does he play this? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Gil, but no, no. She's asking is uh, Biden crazy. Not, uh, he plays crazy. He's Biden crazy. Well, he's Sina. He's, <laughs> he doesn't know where no, he is. I think he plays. But it's not him. Right. It's, it's, it's big money. You say yeah. deep state, yeah. but it's big money that is global. Of course. And they're using American military now, American military, to advance their interests. Yes. There are many all they want, things about it. All they want, mm -hmm. and all they ever have wanted, was to steal other people's resources. They want Russia. Yeah. Russia. They want Russian resources. They want all of that territory. That is what to divide it into different that, countries. That's what all of this conflict is about. And the big question is Will this conflict will be China be? Oh, yeah. Will it Continue. be this conflict? Oh many it comes to it. Continue this conflict. I cannot see the future. I don't have a crystal ball, okay? Your opinion. My opinion, based on some experience, Tatiana does not really believe what I'm going to tell you. People find it hard. 
American economy now is collapsing. Yeah. American economy now is collapsing yeah. very, very, very bad. Will be collapsing. Will be, uh, will be collapsing. This, this system of financial regulatory system will be all us, yes? Yeah? All, Dollar of Europe. Or all of Europe. Yeah. Why? Australia, anybody that depends on America, American economy, it's going to collapse. Yeah. And that's when I believe... Is that the end of America? No. No? Why? Just hold tight. I think, <laughs> I think it will... <laughs> what is the exit? American people, yeah. many, many will buy. Okay, it's going to be yeah. terrible. There, there already is mm -hmm. terrible conflict in America. I think like I think like Russia after Soviet Union totally collapsed, and I know about that. Totally collapsed, and what is what is risen in 22 years is a very strong, powerful, amazing country. Amazing country. I hope that in America, that whoever, whatever comes out of it, will rediscover the American values of freedom, liberty, prosperity, and a future for equality for all. Maybe American, America can rediscover that. Maybe. We hope so. We hope so. Yeah. They, but now all prices, you know, this is increasing. <laughs> you know, Americans drive big cars. Huh? Double, twice. twice. People cannot afford to put gas, not only gas and oil, but food. Common people, middle class, cannot afford food and medicine right now. People cannot afford to pay their monthly rent for apartment or mortgage on their house. They kicked out. They're homeless. So when I tell you about what I think is happening and going to happen, it is already happening now in America. What do you think? If America understands that it's the end for him, uh, will he, uh, as a weapon, use his uh, biological authority in many countries? Uh, I two years ago. Yeah. I made as a weapon. I, I made the film, 30 Seconds to Midnight, yeah? yeah. I told you. Yeah. How, so how can we find this? Um, uh, I will send you all the ACDs, you sicknesses, you to Sphere, and I don't know, many uh, means to, um, to save his economy, to save his uh, government, to save his country. I don't know. This system you. is... I made the film, 30 Seconds to Midnight, okay? And at the end of the film, yeah. because it was, I was fearful of a, a, a nuclear war, yeah. okay? Uh -huh. And I said at the end of the film, yeah. will those crazy mm -hmm. neocons mm -hmm. who run Washington realize they have lost this epic battle for control uh -huh. of the world take the whole world down with them with a boom, yeah. nuclear war. Mm -hmm. That was the Plus, message, Ruby that Plus. was the message at the end. Will it happen? Yeah. And, good question. Yeah. Okay, thank you.